Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. I thank God for this day and I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all the students who did the KCSE exam and the result is out today. And uh, I know many have really passed. Some have surpassed their expectations. Others have gone below the expectations. And parents should uh, take this opportunity to encourage their children. You know, sometimes it's very traumatizing when you, the parents had expected that you'd get an A, then you fall below it and they start reprimanding you. You feel like you are unworthy. Let us encourage our children and let them know that the exam is not the end of life. And I know you know this. We also opened schools officially today and I know parents are really grappling with the high cost of living and uh, the high cost of uh, education. But I know we will manage. We shall overcome, as, well, as I always say. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we really have a very good country. God gave us a very good country called Kenya. But our country is being mismanaged and spoiled by our politicians. And especially in the hands of the driver, William Samoy Ruto, and the entire Kenya Kwanzaa team. We are driving our nation to the wrong direction. We have got different tribes that we should really embrace and we should be very proud of our ethnic groups. They say it is only negative ethnicity that is bad, but we should learn from each other culture. You know, it's very wonderful. Now, William Samoy Ruto should be called to order. Because of late he has been very bitter and he has set a very bad precedent. A few days ago, he warned and threatened Kenyans that he will deal with them using the sword that he was given. Then he started intimidating the judiciary. In fact, the judiciary is now a worried lot. Any judgment or any case that involves the executive will always be ruled in favor of the executive. As a result of that intimidation, you saw a lady, a lady that is a, a relative to one of the politicians went ahead and started intimidating some medical staff in Port Victoria, some hospital in Port Victoria, in Busia, because the, in Busia country, because they know that that is the order of the day. When you have power or you, you enjoy the trappings of power, you use it to intimidate people. And then yesterday, you saw the shocking scenes where some policemen, I call them bloodthirsty policemen, went and fired live ammunition and tear gas right inside a group of people who were celebrating the birthday of Raila Muludinga. It was condemned from all corners. And then we saw the Inspector General, uh, Kuhome, Japheth Kuhome, also telling us that he also condemns what happened, he doesn't know what happened, and is calling, you know, for investigation. I wonder how someone who's in charge of that docket wants an investigation. He should tell us because I believe he's in charge. But that is not what I want to talk about. Barely 24 hours after those shocking scenes in the CBD, today another group of bloodthirsty policemen fired live ammunition at tear gas in, 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 in a gathering where the Kisi governor, Simba Arati, was addressing the people of that county and they were trying to plan matters, you know, basari because schools are open and parents are really feeling the heat of the high cost of education. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> No, 
Bobera kore wote mugirango. Mo wancha bara itusikane. Mo wancha pi. Eh, ekiagera mwa msira bwate gasiae. Mo jumba gatwale gasiae. Mo seneta gatwale gasiae. Mo women rapo gatwale gasiae. No mo governor atwale gendo ke. Gasiae. Mo wancha boyo. Bono tiganda aburi. Abana abana tia kominyoka nyao. Apana fujo muga netsi sejiye mega. Ah 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 ngoyo. Usoro. Aye. What do you make of those horrible scenes? Because Maku, when a governor calls for a meeting that wants to deal with matters education, there are grannies. You will find out that there are old men and women who are there because some of them were going there to find out whether their grandchildren can go to school courtesy of the bursary. Because I, I don't understand the Kisi language, but I could hear them talking about bursary. And even when the, the, the goons came, Osoro was talking, was trying to condemn, you know, violence and all that. All the same, despite all this, they, they started firing and people were running helter-skelter. This tells you that the Kenya Kwanzaa government does not care about the aftermath. Because when there's such a kind of stampede, people will even break their legs and, and you see, you are causing more chaos for nothing. And you wonder... If there is a problem, someone there was shouting Osoro, Osoro, Osoro. It means they are pointing fingers at uh, the, the South Wigirango member of parliament, Silvanus Osoro, who is also the chief whip, the majority chief whip in, 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 in the National Assembly. When we have leaders behaving in a manner that they don't care when people are running in a stampede and they can get hurt in the process, then it tells you we have a government that does not care about the people, does not care about the aftermath of their actions. You see, I was taught that before you speak, before you do anything, please stop for a moment and you know ask yourself what will be the aftermath of my utterances or of my actions. They don't care at all. These people, because I know this is a contest between Simba Arat, who is the current governor, and Silvanus Sosoro, who has been placed strategically by the Uda regime to contest for that seat. I mean, it is Osoro's democratic right to contest for a Kisi gubernatorial, you know, position. But we still have time. I have seen William Ruto telling the opposition that they should give him time to at least, you know, fix our economy. So that those who want to face him should wait for 2027. And I think that should be the truth even about our, our other leaders, including MCAs, members of parliament, senators and governors. If you have an appetite for a seat, it has not remained vacant. Let us give these leaders time. Instead of coming, and even if you want to start campaigning, there's a way you can do it. You can pinpoint, pinpoint the negative in, 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 the, in the county or something. But you don't start, you know, initiating and perpetuating violence. Because when you go ahead with violence, it is not Simbarati who will be hurt, neither is it or sorrow. The people, the innocent people who are there will be hurt. This is wrong, and if Osoro is the one who did this, this must be condemned in the strongest term possible, because we'll have to set a very bad precedent. It is now my way or the highway. It gets funny when you find that a member of parliament wants to intimidate a governor, what does it tell you? It goes without saying that if it is Osoro who is doing this, then the independent institutions, including the police, that we were promised would not be used against opponents of the Kenya Kwanza team, is now listening to their leaders and they are being misused. How can you intimidate a governor, surely? 
It means Osoro has got some authority, and the police in Mugirango or Kisi, the Uda policemen are listening to him. Regarding Kashaba said that they were not going to use the DCI, the police, the judiciary to intimidate their opponents, their nemesis, political nemesis. But that, that is exactly what they are doing. And I feel pain because in all this, Nikama, Nifahali wa William Bawa na Pigana, Ninyasi Ndio inaumia. When these two, two people are struggling and fighting, you know, Osoro has got security, Simbarati has got security. So the people are running Hilta Skelter and they could be injured. So it's the people who are suffering. Come to think of it, Osoro who wants to become a governor, he wants the same people to vote for him. He's intimidating them, chasing them away using the police. Really? And the police who is doing this, can we sometimes use common sense? Even if you are taking orders, you should have a limit. You should have a limit. The Kenya Kwanzaa team does not want the other faction to have political mileage. They are ever engrossed about who is going to take the political mileage. You know, they have some fear of unknown. When Rena was celebrating the birthday party, they stormed the CBD celebration. Why? Because William Ruto's celebration was not as colorful as Raila's. Because it was not as colorful as Uhuru's. And they feel intimidated. Why? Because they have not achieved what they gave, they, they promised Kenyans. Now they are they, they, they are looking at you know unnecessary hula balu, which is not going to help at all. Kenyans know what is happening. So even if you go ahead and intimidate them, they know you promised this and that you have you have not implemented. It is the guilty conscience that they have. They know they have failed, so they are using other means to make up for their failure. Why can't they just do the most honorable thing? Sit down with your think tanks and start implementing your promises. And look at the at the heart of everything is the high levies and taxes that they want to force down on people. Listening to the IMF and all this. Once you have failed, you have failed. This you cannot make it up by intimidating and killing people anyhow. And ladies and gentlemen, if this is the trend that the Kenya Kwanza team has, has, has begun. It is also meant to intimidate the judges. They want to have chaotic scenes so that they feel people feel intimidated, so that the judiciary, those who are going to take them to court, you know, they want to ensure that people are, uh, will coil their tails, they feel inti intimidated, they feel like they don't have a right anymore. But William Ruto must understand that he wants to be Moi, like Uchinda Molo put it, he wants to be Moi, yet he's dealing with people under the new constitution. That does not allow him. It cannot. He wants to achieve what Kibaki achieved, yet he does not have the right people around him. Kibaki never intimidated people using bullets and all this. I mean, it cannot happen. And so, someone must call the president to order. Because these people want to have an anarchy in the country. He wants to intimidate people. We can never go back to the late 80s. We can never go back to the one-party state. To mepiga hatua, it cannot. They will try, but it cannot. You cannot be an executive that is intimidating parliament when you want them to pass your bills. You intimidate the judiciary when you want them to pass your laws. You intimidate the DCI. Everybody feels, feels intimidated. By the end of the day, it will be everyone against you. 